Ancient Greece was a land filled with myths and legends. Ranging from the heroic war between the gods and the titans at the beginning of time, to tragic love stories. However, none of these stories are more famous than that of the epic Trojan War, which saw a collection of Greek city-states attempt to besiege a small town in mainland Turkey. This is the story of the Trojan War. Our story begins in Troy, where King Priam learns of a prophecy that his newborn son, Prince Paris, would bring about the downfall of his city. Wanting to avoid this, a tearful Priam brings his baby to the mountain and abandons him there. However, the young prince is found by a shepherd who raises the boy as his own. Unaware that he's a prince of Troy, Paris becomes a shepherd and spends most of his time herding sheep along the mountain where he was found. Moving over to mainland Greece, the gods for Olympus are once again quarrelling. This time it's between the brothers Zeus and Poseidon. Zeus is king of the gods and lord of thunder and lightning, whilst Poseidon is the overlord of the sea. The reason for this quarrel is that both gods have fallen in love with a sea nymph called Thetis. However, much to each god's horror, they find out about a prophecy regarding the sea nymph. It was said that any son born of this nymph would be stronger than his father. Not wanting to repeat history as the gods themselves had overthrown their fathers, the Titans, both Zeus and Poseidon decide it's best that Thetis marries a mortal man, specifically King Peleus, who is a noble and righteous man. Peleus is informed that the gods have chosen a bride for him. However, there's a problem. Thetis doesn't exactly want to get married. And furthermore, her being a sea nymph means that she can change form at will. As a result, Peleus will have to prove his worth and win over her affections. He is told the way to do this is to sneak up on Thetis while she's sleeping on the beach and grab hold of her. And as the sea nymph changes form to hold on for dear life, eventually she will come round to him and decide that he's a suitable husband. Peleus makes his way down to the beach and sees his soon-to-be wife asleep on the shore. Following the gods' advice, Peleus sneaks up on Thetis and grabs hold of her. In a state of shock, Thetis changes into many forms, however, throughout all of her transformations, Peleus holds firm. Thetis, impressed by this, stops changing form and agrees to become Peleus' new wife. Announcing their engagement, Mount Olympus erupts in celebrations with Zeus preparing a massive feast for the couple once their wedding is over. The gods then invite everyone to this after party, all except for one god who they find particularly distasteful, the goddess of discord, Eris. However, no one actually tells Eris that she's not invited to the party, so Eris walks up to the entrance of the party and is denied entrance by Hermes, who says that she's not welcomed here and should go home. Eris, in a fit of rage, evaporates into thin air before reappearing in the dining hall. There, she rolls a golden apple along the table. On the apple is inscribed, To the Fairest. Immediately, three of the most powerful goddesses in Mount Olympus reach for the apple, believing it to be rightfully theirs. These are Hera, wife of Zeus, Athena, goddess of warfare and wisdom, and Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. The three goddesses immediately start quarrelling amongst themselves and decide to ask Zeus to decide who the apple truly belongs to. Not wanting to upset three of the most powerful goddesses in Mount Olympus and his wife, Zeus decides to delegate this task to somebody he deems worthy. The young Paris was having a fairly average day when all of a sudden he comes across three stunning goddesses. In a flash of light, Zeus appears before Paris and tells him that he must decide which of the three goddesses is the most beautiful. Realizing that their looks alone might not win them the apple, the three goddesses begin to bribe Paris. Hera offers him power, Athena offers him wisdom, and Aphrodite offers him the love of the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris decides on Aphrodite, 
much to the fury of Hera and Athena. Aphrodite smiles and informs him that the most beautiful woman in the world is Queen Helen of Sparta, and with that the three goddesses vanish. Still slightly bewildered by what had just happened, Paris leaves the mountain, heading towards Troy, as there are some games and festivities going on there. Paris wins a few of the tournaments, however, it's noticed that he has a birthmark remarkably similar to that of a baby that was left on the mountain. In rejoice, King Priam declares that his son has returned to him, and an even more startled Paris is brought into the Trojan palace and introduced to his real family. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind the scene footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.